How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 13, and we have an incredibly important Texas State game in front of us. But before we do that, I gotta say thank you. 200 subs. That's awesome, you guys. It really means a ton to me. Hopefully we can uh, continue to get these dubs and, you know, I guess have games like last week's where we, uh, <laughs> we make them more interesting than they should be by just playing really poorly in the first half. But anyways, the reason why this matchup against Texas State is so important to us, you know, they don't seem that great. They're four and five. Who have they played? Um, you know, very, very mediocre wins. You know, not the worst losses, although their losses, they kind of get beaten pretty bad. Um, but the reason that it's so important is, you know, the thing that we do at the start of every episode, our recruiting. Look at that. We might even be able to add a couple more guys, but at least this many players coming to visit uh, at this home game. Jonathan Williams, Buck Webb, Marcus Frederick, Travis Williams, David Williams. Oh, the Williams brothers. <laughs> Joel Hall, Bo Wilcox, Kyle Walker, Brandon Parker, John Gonzalez, Phil Bonner, Jamal Coley, Carlos Sanders, and David Singleton. All set to come to this game. Four guys ready for visits. Can we... Potentially add more. No, Matt Peterson's not going to go there. Kyle Walton will come to this game, so add him to the list. Uh, Mike Johnson's going to come to the game, add him to the list, and Adam Johnson is as well. So just a ridiculous amount of players uh, lined up to visit in this match. And so it's going to be very, uh, very important that we do well, uh, both on offense and defense. Now, again, we're going to just do our normal look here as we go to our top schools and just make sure that we're doing fine. Um, we don't like... Uh, some of this is pretty rough, but it shouldn't be the end of the world. A lot of the people that we are competing against had their visits week 12. We'll have ours week 13, so that's going to be good. This is a very important week for us with Kyle Walker. He's a 63 overall tight end, and we are down 450, 98% locked. If we have a good visit with Kyle Walker... Um, you know, pass to a tight end for 100 yards. So we're going to be looking to Isaiah Likely and beating a conference team. We get those bonus points plus the 450 plus the now 500 that we're going to give to him. We could get him to commit. And after scrolling through and checking, it seems like we're looking pretty solid. Everybody has scholarships offered uh, with those two players that are going to South Carolina off the board. We do have five open spots. So I'm going to quickly go in and take a look and find some guys. And then we'll see. Uh, we'll come back here and scout them. So we have found a few players. I'm not sure if any of them will really be any good, but uh, Marshall Preston, pretty decent looking running back. Hey, even at 71 overall, that would be a great pickup for us. 95 speed, 83 acceleration is pretty solid. Not the strongest, uh, not the best with his ball carry moves, but for us, you know, stuff like that is nice. We find a gem in the defensive end at Sydney McRae. Steven Gunn goes up to 68, so a small gem. Chris Godfrey goes down 59 overall, not the best. And what would an NCAA uh, dynasty be on YouTube without finding somebody named Will Smith to add to the team? He does drop down to a 58, but uh, we might have to add him for the culture. So we've given out the rest of our points, and uh, I think, I'm hoping that we're going to get a very solid amount of commits uh, after this game, especially if we do well. One thing that could help us with all this is if we go with the Royal Treatment, every single one of their players is going to get some bonus points uh, on that visit. I would go closer, but again, we're nearing the end of the, the season, so we're going to get an extra 500 points, but um, I just don't feel it's as useful at this moment. Defensive coordinator, we can finish out the recharge skill, and offensive coordinator, we can finish out the up tempo so those could help our offense and defense in the game we have moved from awards semi-finalists to finalists teddy gallagher is up there for the benderick and also the best linebacker and then of course now aaron Diggs for heisman but also best returner on the season 1254 kick return yards so far four touchdowns 518 punt return yards with three touchdowns. Seven special teams punt touchdowns for Aaron Diggs. Three punt returns is a lot for me. So I'm very impressed. He's only 66 overall as a player. So that's just insane. Only a freshman. He is going to be uh, a monster 
for the next couple of years. Nothing too crazy happening in the Heisman race here. Travis Etienne still doing his work. Sam Ellinger doing the same. Sam Howell jumps up to third. Tank Bigsby jumps up into fourth. And Kellen Mond drops down. So a little bit of a shakeup. But we still have a little bit of time for things to go crazy. You know, let's let's see. Travis Etienne, uh, 160 attempts. Close to 1,000 yards. So he will break 1,000. Averaging 6 yards per carry is very nice. Um, under 100 per game. But 50 touchdowns. Not the worst season I've ever seen. As far as ranked matchups go this week, Florida and Auburn are playing, so one of them will take their second loss. Uh, Cincinnati and UCF are going to play. IRL, they just recently had a pretty close matchup, so interesting to see what happens there. And then, of course, we have 12 and or 11 and 12 in Wisconsin and Minnesota playing. And 14 and 16 in Nebraska and Penn State. So some interesting stuff. And then again, if we win this in enough chaos happens near the uh, lower ranks here, you know, in the in the 25 to 20 range, we could see Coastal Carolina uh, ranked going into, I think it would be week 14. Again, Herb Street is going to go for us as he should. We're the better overall team. Statistically, we're surprisingly better on a lot of things. Their pass defense, of course, their total offense is going to be better. Um, and we actually beat them in turnover differential. Somehow only minus six on the year in our turnover differential. Obviously not good, uh, but not as bad as I expected it. Texas State minus 13. That's going to be pretty key, especially defensive, secondary recruits, linebackers, stuff like that. They're going to want to see pass deflections and interceptions. I'm really hoping that we can take the ball away from these guys. This is a pretty important game for us for the recruits. So I'm thinking we might go ahead and wear. I'm trying to think what's more flashy for the recruits. I personally uh, like the black jersey with the teal pants combo more than maybe the other way around. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, and the Bobcats, I don't think, again, have been updated. I do like their jerseys, uh, you know, kind of. They, they got some interesting touches. Those like claw marks on the shoulders and the uh, the legs are pretty cool. But we're going to go ahead and have them. Well, can we change what they're wearing? I, actually, it seems like the game, it just like won't let us do that. As uh, Wow, for the first time, the shoes have actually loaded in properly. Typically, uh, when I try to load in these shoes, the black team color, the interesting Under Armour ones sh don't show the right colors. But this time... I don't know if you guys can see that. They are pretty spiffy. But we will, I guess, be doing uh, a colorway game as uh, they're going to be in their home uniforms. And we're also going to be in our home uniforms. So this one, I guess, will be pretty interesting. Um, 77 overall for us. They're 72 on the, uh, the overall overall. <laughs> and we have just the slightest edge on offense and a pretty good edge on defense. But again... I mean, how much is that going to matter if if I'm playing poorly? So as we load into this one again, um, it looks like they'll probably be passing the ball a decent amount on us. And hopefully we can run the ball because they don't seem to be stopping that very well. A million guys visiting. Likely the goals that I'm thinking of are going to be pass for over 250, rush for over 100, um, get like four deflections, two interceptions, and some sacks, throw for 100 yards to the tight end, and then I think we'll be okay. Injury-wise, um, they are, well, their best player is the low 80s overall, so that bodes well for us. Uh, no injuries on either side, though, so hopefully a, a nice healthy game here as we try to move to 9-1 and 7-0 and and in the Sun Belt. <laughs> this little weird texture bug uh, as the coin toss goes in their favor, and we, for the first time in a while... We're going to be receiving this kick. So Diggs is back to return to open this game up. We haven't seen that in a while, and you better believe we're bringing it out. Kick doesn't make it to the end zone, which bodes well for us. And no, not a good return. We make it to the 20, but hey, good news is it gives the offense a lot of room to pick up those yards that we need. Now, the fact that we need to pass for 250 yards concerns me a little bit because obviously not my strong suit uh, the past few games. Maribel opens up the game with a four-yard carry for us, though. Not only that, but their defense uh, statistically is better at stopping the pass. 
so it's going to make things difficult. But on third and four, I think we're going to go to the air here. I'm expecting them to bring some pressure, so hopefully we can find an open man quick. And there was CJ Marable, but Grayson, we call him, missed him by a mile and a half. That texture bug is hilarious. And unfortunately, we're just going to have to punt this one away. We'll see if we can kind of cheese it past the return man to get a decent uh, kick. And that one is fielded. Gosh, at the 25 or so, and then I miss and there's a broken tackle, and they end up getting a decent amount out of it. After the offense goes three and out, it's time for the defense to come out with uh, not the greatest field position and see if we can do anything and right away. That is not a great start. Uh, Shareed picking up 24 yards on the nice pass. Very, very annoying that they're able to do well. They're going to go to the air again here. And that one it just misses his man. Brady McBride now 50%, one of two on this drive. We're going to be jumping around between the man and the zone in this game as they go with the little draw for their first handoff and works all too well. Six yards there. We've got a massive third and four. All these recruits visiting. This is incredibly important that we do well and we're going to get the quarterback to throw that one away. Good that he doesn't scramble on us. And good job from the coverage to hold there. We'll see. If all of our adjustments to the sliders will be enough as they are going to try a field goal here. It's a long one, but man, yeah. He put that one straight down the middle with room to spare. I like that. <laughs> number 11, Wisconsin beats number 12, Minnesota, 20 to 16. All right, Diggs back again to return. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about him taking these to the house in this game just because we need those recruiting goals, but... At least we got past the 25 this time, and the offense needs to get it done. I really don't want to have to sit McCall for Peyton again, but, I mean, if his passing is not good, we might have to do that. Marable getting another good first down carry. And I think one of the biggest factors in this game is going to be me maintaining possession of the ball, and McCall just missed another wide open man. 0 of 2 to start this game for him, and it's another third down for us. For how we normally play this, this is risky. We're going with the screen. And Javon got it. Oh, I was a little bit late making the throw, but it works out and we get the first down. So Grayson finds his first completion. Maybe get him uh, into some sort of rhythm here. And Maribel picks up a decent four yards there over the top of the linebacker. Second and six. We go to the air again, and this one is completed to Javon Hiley across the 40-yard line. I was really tempted to throw the deep ball, but I thought better of it, and uh, we get the first down as a result. All I want from this game is just to avoid the turnovers. They're bringing a lot of pressure. We're just going to audible here. Let's uh, let's just try to catch them off guard. Obviously, Latushka wide open immediately. Stays on his feet. Oh, Oh, <laughs> close to breaking free there. That's an easy 20 yards. If the defense is going to show their hand that much, I've got to make them pay for it. And we, we get ourselves a good first down. And now Maribel can run towards the corner and pick up three. You know, if he averaged three, if he averages three per carry in this game, I don't think I'll be too upset. Down three, nothing. We're in a spot now where we, uh, at the very least, should be able to get a field goal out of this drive. But I would love a touchdown and we've got to third and three to see if that can become a reality if we need to settle for the field goal it's not the end of the world but i would like to do better and i kind of wanted to throw to likely on that seam route but we'll just uh find javon, Hi javon highly uh at the five yard line kind of a weird broken play but it works for the first and goal so after missing his first two pass attempts mccall now has completed the next four in a row Maribel's going to just get back to the line of scrimmage on that run. And uh, we're just going to go up the middle. We only need five and a half yards for the touchdown. Maribel doing a decent chunk there. Got two. Third and goal, though. I don't want to settle for the field goal. This is incredibly risky. I'm looking for the screen. Highly gets the catch, and he fights his way into the end zone. Just outside his uh, man. He came to tackle him and was able to hold him off as he got into the end zone. The screenplay's working relatively well so far in this game. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised with the result of that play. And we're going to take a 7-3 lead near the end of the first quarter now. 
So the offense got it done in a very good fashion, picking up a lot of yards that we needed for those recruiting goals. Now the defense just needs to get those sacks and deflections and picks. Also, I'm pretty impressed that I just uh, got kind of a, almost an open field tackle and spill him. Oh, 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 I was trying to ball hawk that one. They find Banks though for the first down. I thought for sure that the safety was going to be there for the uh, pick. Out routes. <gasps> Kelly's there, and he's got a pick. So we miss it on the first play. We get it here on the second. And we have one of two that we need for some of our recruits. That was fantastic. And way to get the feet inbounds to uh, complete the catch. Well, you guys know how I like to play after a big momentum play like that we're gonna throw up a bomb here for javon Hiley, and he comes down with it it's a one play 45 yard touchdown pass grayson mccall now six of eight through the air 100 yards uh, on the day he got rocked as he was throwing that one but a beautiful pass javon gets up and get it the benefits of having a tall receiver just like that it's gonna be 14 to 3. In my opinion, there is almost no better time to look for a home run play than after a massive momentum changing turnover as, oh, I thought maybe we could get there to uh, get another pick, but hey, it worked out well for us. And a play like that allows us to, you know, not only swing the momentum from the turnover itself, but then, you know, exacerbate that with a massive touchdown play. So we... Extend our lead to 11 points. They're going to go five wide to the air. Quarterback scrambling early, and we're going to hit him, but not before he picks up six yards. And just like that, we're at the end of the first quarter. So a pretty solid look there. 14-3. We did surprisingly well after going three and out our first drive. And I got to say, I, I'm liking our odds so far if we can just continue this level of play. Starting this second quarter from about midfield, the Bobcats are going to go with a draw play. Qu er, running back hurdles over a downed lineman there and picks up five yards of the first down. I am I feel like they are not utilizing it, but they could just run the ball very successfully in this game, and they are doing that as that's another big 13 or 14 yards there. Thankfully, every once in a while here, they're going into these five wide sets, and uh, hopefully we can we can do our job to stop them. Ah, not quick enough there. We can't close out, and it's another first down. Struggling a little bit here on defense. Can we pick it up? Quarterback scrambling. Oh, we get the first sack, and apparently a school record for sacks in a season there. I am unsure of... Uh, what defense seems to be working better for us? Sometimes it seems like the man is a, is a lot better, and sometimes we just dominate them in the zone, but uh, not working there, third and one. I'm absolutely expecting this one to go to the running back on third and one. We're bringing big pressure, and oh, he breaks the tackle from behind. Can't break the shoestring, though. It is a first and goal for Texas State. We will be trying whatever we can to uh, prevent... A touchdown, <laughs> although, oh my gosh, not only did he score, but he just obliterated a man as he walked into the end zone. So the Bobcats have a very solid drive there. Going the length of the field and picking up seven points. It's 14 to 10 now, and Diggs has a pretty solid 28-yard return. Let's see if we can have another successful drive ourselves. 446 before the half, and it is important to remember... They get the ball at halftime. We will go to the air on this first down, and the slant to Latouche goes open to give us a manageable third down. On this third and three, I've really got to hope that the offensive line steps up. We're going to the ground. Marable gets some blocks, and oh, the diving tackle keeps him just shy of the line again. It's fourth and one. You know, typically, I think I would go for this, but we're going to play the field position game here and just try to pin them inside oh man inside their own 20 was a, what i was hoping for but that was not a great punt weird bounce it does go like at the 20 but it was kind of a yikes 330 left in the half we don't do nearly as well as i had hoped in uh containing their, or putting them further back into the field um and they're going to be going with this uh quarterback run here qb blast 
on second and ten. Gets him four yards, but now it's third and six. We've got a very good chance to stop him. They will go to the air. Quarterback's going to scramble. Oh, my gosh. I thought he was going to go towards the edge. He cut it up field. He fumbles the ball, and Silas Kelly picks it up. I don't think there's a very much of a chance for a good return here, but it's our second turnover. Unfortunately, I don't know if fumbles too much to help us, but let's get back out on the field before they can review this. And I guess that's good news. The replay booth doesn't come in to buzz down and stop the play. And we're going to throw one up for Javon Hiley because that's what we do. And <laughs> we almost threw a pick, but you got to take that shot after a big turnover like that. Second and 10. We basically threw that one into uh, triple coverage, but almost came down with it. And on second down, going to make it a manageable third down for us. Man, I thought Marable was going to do one of those stand back up and keep running, but he only manages to pick up four. Now on third and six, they're bringing a safety blitz. And again... Grayson McCall just missed his man by a mile, so fourth and six, and I think we might have to punt it away again. It's frustrating because we obviously know that we can do pretty well. That, he just caught that one on the run. A fantastic, fantastic punt return, all things considered. We are poised to bury these guys deep, but they get the ball at the 30 now, and a uh, couple of bad drives for us is allowing them to really stick in this game more than I would hope. Definitely feels like a lot more solid defense than we're used to. This one's going to be a handoff. Oh, we were there. We just couldn't quite pull him down, and he gets the first down. First down. Quarterback's keeping it on the read. Oh, how do we miss that? He's got blockers. He's got a convoy. Can we get the tackle? I'm. Oh, my gosh. Two broken tackles, and Brady McBride goes 46 yards into the end zone. He's not a fast quarterback. That was not a good play. We should not be losing now by three points. That is incredibly disappointing. Uh, <laughs> I thought that we were going to be able to do a little bit more than that. But uh, I guess we'll just get to see Diggs come out. And we'll get to see Diggs do some Diggs things. And get us a decent little return. Well, there's a minute and 55 here on the clock before halftime. So we have to be a little bit worried about the our, our tempo. But, I mean, are we even going to be able to last that long if we go three and out? It's been a struggle through the air with the exception of a few plays, so I gotta say I'm worried, and the pressure's coming. We're throwing this one away. Hopefully it's no intentional grounding, but it's third and long now. It just has not felt like these past couple drives, like we've been able to do much with the ball. This is maybe a risky throw. Denmark dropped it. Oh, Sam, you can't screw us. It's fourth and 11. We gotta punt it away again. It's so frustrating. That's how it happens. <laughs> that one just skipped past the return man. He's going to get it, and finally we tackle him. He just didn't get to the spot in time. I wasn't even really trying to cheese that one like uh, we normally could have, and it bounced past them. They have bad field position to start this. A man, wow, wide open over the middle, but the quarterback misses him as he's throwing on the move. This could be a, a decent field flipping type event if we could hold them to a quick three and out. I don't expect it to happen, but oh, that'll help. Massive sack at the five yard line. It's third and 16. Surely we can't screw this one up with 30 seconds to go in the half. They're burning clock at this point. They're definitely worried and oh, the broken tackle. Oh, thank goodness we bring him down. We'll take our first time out, but that one could have been in a position where we maybe had a chance to block the punt if we had dropped him there on the two or the one yard line. Instead, 22 seconds before the half, down three points. Diggs will have a chance to field a punt and makes one man miss, makes another. Uh, <laughs> it's trying a little back juke spin combo there. It doesn't work. 11 seconds now. At the very least, I think that we could tie this one up with a field goal now. The question is, can we add anything to that or can Sam Denmark just drop another pass? Seven seconds now. I think it's. I think we're getting one last look at the end zone before we are forced to kick. It could be a very, very long. Uh, oh my gosh, a very long field goal, but it's a strip sack for Texas State, and we have our turnover there. End of the half too. So this is really not going the way that we would intend. In fact, I think that this. Yeah, it's a hail mary. Can we? Oh, what? What is, what is that throw from the quarterback? <laughs> Ah, oh, you got to pick that one off. We need that for the recruits. 
thankfully hits the turf at the very worst case scenario there. Um, and I don't know, I guess we're walking into the locker rooms losing. God, offense just not getting it done so far. We are going to have to see the defense come back out to start this third quarter. I'm not very stoked about that, but I don't know. Maybe they can uh, figure something out here and, and get us the win. Trying to defend the run has been, uh, you know, proving to be difficult in this game as, yeah, the quarterback just misses another pass. We're going to have a late audible there. Quarterback scrambling. You know, I was going to bring the blitz, but audibled out of it late and it allows the quarterback, I think, to scramble. But we do have a third down. My goal on this one is to just make sure that we prevent anything crazy. I'm going to be kind of acting as a QB spy. I saw uh, Cherie there open just too late. Couldn't get to him in time. He's got his running back in the backfield. We're bringing a blitz expecting the run there, but it doesn't do enough and oh my goodness. Well, this is not going according to plan. Now losing by 10. Oh, man, we brought the blitz on that run, too, and it still just didn't do anything for us. And uh, down 10, this is this is not looking great, and it's not a good return either. So if the offense doesn't do anything, I'd, I'm, I'm at a loss for words because we just can't move the ball um, in that situation. We're going to try just a QB blast here to, to open up the drive, and yeah, that's, that's not working very well. Two yards there. With how inaccurate Grayson McCall has been in this game, I'm about to bench him again. I know it's not great to uh, to be benching your quarterback, but he's just not getting it done and only finds two yards there. Uh, I think maybe we can pick this up highly. Yeah, his man was way too far off of him, so we are able to get a first down. That that feels good. Javon Highly with six catches in this game, and uh, McCall only has nine receptions so he's doing most of it as we find isaiah likely for 20 uh of the 100 yards we need to a tight end trying to move the ball as best we can on this drive for the most part it's working and i think maybe if we go for these little dump offs more it might might be beneficial it's certainly not fun to only be getting two yards of play but if that's the only way we can move the ball then so be it although marable that's a big eight yard chunk there beautiful Go into the air again. I'm going to have to roll outside the pocket here. And there's Latushko. Great chunk of yards inside the red zone down to the 12-yard line. That worked well. 164 through the air now. Less than 100 to go for that recruiting goal. But, you know, almost more important than that is definitely getting the win. So we need to close out this drive as we had Marable wide open and just, again, couldn't find him. Try the read option on second and 10 here. That's going to be a handoff. Marable has a decent gap to work with and falls forward for nine yards. So third and one now inside the five. This is the point in the game where I'm kind of regretting some of uh, the punts that we went for. And uh, ooh, Marable, man, bounced around a lot there. Gets the first and goal. And we're just going to run him straight back at it on this one. Let's see if we can get the quick touchdown. We've got this back to a three-point game midway through the third quarter. With this being a three-point game, our defense comes back out on the field hoping to get something done, and there's another sack. Three on the game, maybe enough for some of our recruits, but more importantly, a great start to the drive. Second and 11 now. See if we can get something crazy. We get the quarterback to throw to the running back. It's so hard to have good coverage when the player that you're guarding runs outside the screen so only giving up five is pretty good in retrospect and on third and six they're going to go to the air again and it's an out route but you know the reception is short of the line to gain fourth and three the defense is held that's going to allow Aaron Tiggs <laughs> deep into the backfield here uh, with a chance to field this one and get a good return fielding it just inside the 30 Locking doesn't really seem to be there, although he's done a ridiculous amount. He's still on his feet. What a spin move to get that extra 10 yards. A minute and 51 left in the third. We're poised to potentially take the lead or tie the game on this drive. We will throw on this one. Is Actually, I'm going to send... I know that Denmark gets the 
drops these often, but they're bringing some pressure. It looks like, oh, this is a terrible throw and it's picked off. I knew the second that I pressed it that it was not going to be good. And <laughs> on top of all of that, it's going to be a pick six. Oh my gosh, we were doing so good at avoiding the terrible throws. You know, we made bad ones, but that's our first really, really bad throw. And it bites us in the ass. Back down 10 with a minute and 14 left in the third. Well, I guess we get digs back on special teams, so... <laughs> Not the end of the world. Fielding this one from inside the end zone, and it's the best return yet. One man to beat across midfield. He stumbles down after being knocked from behind, but it's still a great return, and we have good field position. I mean, we knew that I was going to throw a pick eventually. It's just a shame... Uh, uh, when it came and how bad it ended up being is the option only goes for a yard. The clock is starting to run pretty thin here in the third quarter. Uh, is this a tr tough throw? Uh, we found Hiley, but he couldn't hold on to it. Big third and nine as we're going to go to the air again. And, oh my gosh, again, he's just leading his guys a little bit too much. And I'm going to have to go for this. We're not at a spot that I feel comfortable punting the ball. As, oh my gosh, we almost throw another pick. It was another badly placed football. Uh, if you put that towards the sideline, there's a very good chance that we get it. But instead, it's a turnover on downs. This game has been very frustrating in terms of passing. I think Grayson McCall's done. I think I have to sit him. Quarterback kept it on this one. I went for the strip as we uh, get the tackle. And unfortunately for us, it's not enough in the moment. However, we will be bringing a big blitz. As they throw the screen, strong there to knock him back. Two broken tackles. And just like that, they get 17 yards. Tackling might be the, the one thing that we just need to fully recruit for. As finally, we actually do get a stop there as the third quarter comes to a close. But we're down 10. They have the ball. We're going to need to score back-to-back -back touchdowns. We just aren't going to be able to get away with uh, less than that. As, oh, thankfully... A little false start will back them up five yards. Second and 15. This would be a great time for a sack. They're going to hand it off, though. Gallagher has his tackle broken, and we're able to get him eventually, but it's now third and five. I'm expecting another handoff. It is there. We bring him down fourth and five, so we're going to hold him to a field goal. This means that we're still in the game, but maybe they miss it as well. I believe that this kicker has enough of a leg to be able to make this it's not an easy one 46 yards and he got it so it's 13 point deficit for us with five minutes to go in this game now i would love to be able to get our offense you know kind of in a groove and uh picking up offensive yards but if Diggs wants to take this one back and make it real easy for us i wouldn't complain uh, just a mediocre one at least sets us up for success on the drive Expect to see me running around a lot on this one because I just don't expect uh, the passing to be great. But if we can utilize Grayson's legs, that'll be fine. And we're going to be in the hurry up. We just don't have the time left in this game to do much else. I'm going to throw up a risky pass. Sam Denmark. Oh, that ball was underthrown and we're lucky it wasn't picked off. Second and 10. We go to the air. They're bringing some pressure. I'm running for my life. Grayson outrunning some guys, gets past the line of scrimmage and gets knocked out of bounds, still picked up five. He had to run about 30 to get it, but it's useful, giving us a more manageable third down. And again, I'm just going to take off running because I know that it's risky to do anything else as Maribel bowls over a linebacker and gets 12. First down, we go to the air again. The pressure's coming, McCall. Has a ton of room to work with, and he is, is gonna score. <laughs> As we break 100 rushing yards on the game, we make it a six point uh, deficit, and we have plenty of time if the defense can just get a stop. I'm not sure how much I trust the defense on this one, but uh, we're gonna give them the full field to work with, depending on what special teams can do, and that's a great tackle. We kept them, I think, just inside the 20. So the Bobcats of Texas State will have a long ways to go if they are going to uh, find success on this drive. Unfortunately, a field goal might be enough to put this one out of reach for us. 
Second and eight. We just need decent uh, pass coverage, although that's going to be a handoff. And we get the stop. Third and seven. This is a fantastic job so far. All we need is one more stop here as they go to the air. Quarterback scrambling. Nobody's going to be near him. And it's going to be a first down as he crosses midfield with the football. It's 31 yards for Brady McBride. That is devastating. I thought that we had him. Our coverage looked solid, but we just couldn't contain the edge and nobody fast enough to get to the quarterback. Uh, means bad news for us. Decent stop on that first down at least. Well, our coverage doesn't seem all that great so far on this drive. Um, and our, we're not really pressuring the quarterback. Are they really burning the clock already? Okay. Our pass rush really doesn't seem all that great on the drive so far. They're going to start to burn this clock now so we can time our jumps or time the snaps right if we need to. And we've got another third down, but it's third and two, and this is tough. We are bringing the house on this third and two. And engage eight. We know that it's likely going to be a run. We should be able to time this snap since we know exactly when they are snapping it. We're through the line. We just went past them. And they get the first down. Oh, two minutes to play. We, we have to hold them. Oh, we're going to bring the blitz. I don't know why that they're showing a pass here. But maybe good news for us. Again, we know that they're going to burn the clock. I'm going to use her a defensive lineman so that we can utilize this uh, this little bit of uh, advantage, knowing exactly when they're going to snap the ball and see if maybe we can beat them. We get pressure. That's game. We have to let them score, I think. Well, we're blitzing literally all 11 players. I'm hoping that maybe we can strip the fump or the football, but it's just not working. If we don't get the ball back, we can't win. So at this point, we are hoping for the best third and six. Uh, it's still not looking good, but if, I guess if we hold them to a field goal, that's okay. Again, though, we will rush all 11 just right up the middle because we can hold them to a field goal and maybe a miracle can happen still here. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get it, but they're coming out with the field goal. We know exactly when they're going to snap it. Can I time this correctly? No, I screwed that up and they get the field goal. 48 seconds. We're down two scores. Offense and the special teams really need to step up as Appalachian State actually falls. So if we can score and recover an onside kick, there is a, still a chance that we win this game. And it would be massively helped if Diggs could take this the distance. Oh, if number eight get blocked, uh, it gets blocked, I think it's over. But at least it was a decent return. This one's going to take pretty much a miracle at this point. And oh my god, I'm bringing him out. I'm sorry, but Grayson McCall has been absolute garbage this game. You can't continue to miss your receivers all day long and expect to play, but I guess Fred, Fred Payton is just as freaking garbage. 36 seconds, third and 10. They're bringing a blitz, a pretty big blitz. Fred's going to get this pass off. Javon Hiley can't come down with it. Fourth and 10 game on the line. We'll see what we can do. They rush for Fred Payton outside the pocket. Throwing one up. Fountain can't get to it. Oh my gosh. How many times are we going to overthrow our receivers in this game? And that's GG's. Texas State's going to win this one. The most important game of the season. And we absolutely screwed it up. The offense was so, so bad today. Outside of maybe three or four plays utterly disappointed um i know that it's not all grayson mccall's fault but he's getting relegated to the second string until fred payton can prove to me that he is actually worse because neither of them has really got it done but we know for a fact that fred payton can win games um just disappointing all those recruits in attendance as well and we fall flat on our faces to a very mediocre texas state such a disappointing loss um, we did get our 100 passing or 100 rushing yards, but we didn't get our passing yards. We didn't get a whole lot of the defensive stuff. Just not a good game. 
uh, after going up 14-3 in the first quarter, couldn't score in the second quarter and just couldn't do enough uh, there at the end of the game. So very, very disappointed the way that the team played. Grayson McCall is our offensive player of the game, but he does not deserve it. And uh, the defense just, you know, they did okay, but they couldn't, uh, they couldn't quite do enough. All that I can hope for now is that uh, as we advance the week um, to our road game at Appalachian State, that maybe the recruits didn't mind too much and they think that them coming here can turn these uh, problems around. <laughs> Let's hope that we pick up a bunch. Well, uh, we get decent visits and... Ooh, okay, so David Williams, 65 overall quarterback commits. 64 overall strong safety, Travis Williams commits. We get our punter and Marcus Frederick and Carlos Sanders, the 62 overall wide receiver. And then Jamal Coy, the right tackle and David Singleton, the left outside linebacker. So all in all, a pretty solid day. Six commits after one game. Uh, could be could be better, could be worse. And then look at this, a lot of XP finalist for the best returner, the best linebacker, uh, the Benerick. And then a school record for sacks in a season at 10. I think that goes to CJ Brewer. Eight and two. Now, uh, we were close to being ranked. <laughs> Herb Street's going to uh, kind of pull in our favor for the Appalachian State. Yes, the Mountaineers are five and five, but uh, <laughs> they're a better team than we are. If we win it, it's not going to be because uh, we play the way that we have a lot of this season. We're going to have to really step up to beat these guys. That's going to do it, though, for this episode. <laughs> Disappointing loss. I really thought that we were going to do so well when the game started in our favor, but we just kind of fell apart at the end and, uh, you know, just couldn't pull it out. And that pick six, man, how devastating is that? If you've made it this far, well, then thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more content, go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button. Uh, you know, both of those mean a lot. And again, thank you guys so much. 200 subs is incredible. And it's been uh, it's been awesome having you guys join me for the ride. If you want to see some more uh, of our content, we play a lot of sports games over at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. But with all that being said, thanks again for watching. My name is Goodmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.